Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm Morgan and today I'm going to be doing a romance roundup. In this video I'm going to be reviewing all of the romance novels that I've read so far this month. I mentioned wanting to start doing videos like this a little bit ago when I mentioned wanting to become Books and Lala, but actually I just love the idea that she had to do these three thriller reviews, so dedicated videos where she talks about specifically the three most recent thriller books that she's read. And I don't read thrillers, but I do like the idea of genre specific review videos, so I thought that it would be really fun to talk about romances, which is the genre that I by far and away read the most of. I think I've read 11 so far this year, and that's a little bit less than a third of all the books that I've read so far. So a lot. And this month alone I've read five. So I'm going to be talking about all five of those books in this video. In the future these are not going to have quite so many. I haven't decided if I want to do like three or four or anything like that, but I thought that I'd start off right now talking about the five that I've read so far in July. The first one I want to talk about is Ransom by Julie Garwood. So I've read a lot of Julie Garwood books, I own quite a few of them, and I've specifically owned this one probably since I was like 15, 14 or 15, um, and so I don't think that it's fair to rate this book because I've owned it for so long and I didn't start rating books until I really started this channel. I just read them and if I liked them I kept them, and I really really like this book, but I don't think it's to everybody's taste. And let me just say the plot before I start really reviewing it or anything. So Ransom is longer than most romances. It's 550 pages and because of that it's a little bit more complicated and I've tried to explain the plot of this book before and it just kind of there's so many moving parts. So let me just try my best. This book is about Jillian, who is an English woman whose father was killed and she was taken captive by this of uh, this baron um, who believes that her father stole a treasure from the king. And she now as an adult has been tasked with going into Scotland and finding her sister who had escaped captivity and also took the treasure with her, they believe, um, and bringing it back or else the baron is going to kill Jillian's uncle. Simultaneously to this, there is a laird, a new laird, which is like the king of like a Scottish clan, um, and someone is trying to take his spot as laird, so they've been working with the baron to kind of draw him out, and in doing so, they try and kidnap his younger brother, but they kidnap the wrong boy, and so Jillian takes this, runs away with this kid and takes him back to Scotland with the help of his godfather, Brodick. And so Brodick is the hero, Jillian is the heroine, and those are kind of like the basic plots going on. They travel all through the Scottish Highlands trying to, you know, talk to the people who are involved and who are, you know, relevant to the scheme that's going on. And I really like this book. I think it's long and there are some parts that are unnecessary and I've yet to really figure out like what the timeline of this is. Like I'm just having trouble figuring it out. So I like it. I think Jillian is funny and interesting and headstrong and flawed in ways that are like actually interesting and not just like, oh, she's perfect, but she can't cook. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's so stupid. So I really like this. Brodick is big and mean, but he's like not mean to her, you know? And like, that's like my favorite thing. That's kind of a trend with all of these you'll probably notice, but we'll get there when we get there. I like this one. I'm not gonna really review, I think the writing is pretty average. I think the characters are really well developed because you spend so long with them, you get to really kind of understand them a little more. I think some parts of the plot are like heavily convoluted and there is like a subplot second romance going on that is just a little bit unnecessary. It's a little bit kind of like everybody has to pair up, you know what I mean? But other than that, I like this book. I'm not gonna rate it. You can tell that I like it, but because I have such a bias, Kind of for this book. I don't think it's fair. It was just a reread. The next two books I want to talk about are Trust Me by Jane Ann Krentz and Wicked Widow by Amanda Quick. The reason I want to talk about these books kind of together is because they're written by the same woman. Jane Ann Krentz uh, writes under three different pen names. For her contemporary romances, she uses Jane Ann Krentz. For historical romances, she uses Amanda Quick. And then she has a kind of speculative fiction, sci-fi, space universe where she writes under the name Jane Castle. I am particularly biased to Amanda Quick. I own eight or nine of the Amanda Quick books and I only own three 
Jane Ann Krentz books, but I'm gonna start with Trust Me because I read that one first. Trust Me is about Sam Stark, who is a computer genius living in Seattle, and uh, this book was written in the 90s, I believe, like the early 90s, um, but the book starts and he's been left at the altar, and his caterer, Desdemona Wainwright, is trying to convince him that he does need to pay the bill still. Uh, he takes a liking to her and decides to bring her on as the contracted caterer for all of his company's events, and they kind of start this relationship romance with each other until someone tries to break into Sam's computer. The one with the original coding for this program he's developed that's like a code breaking program. I'm gonna get, I don't really know, and I'll get to that in a second. He accuses Desdemona's like deadbeat half-brother, not half-brother, stepbrother, and she says that Sam needs to find proof that it actually was him, and it kind of goes from there. This was not my favorite. I gave it two stars. I actually think it was just bad. The sex scenes were bad, the romantic chemistry wasn't really there, the characters were both kind of caricatures of what they're supposed to be, so Desdemona comes from like a family of actors and one thing is that she's like the first she owns a catering company and she's the first Wainwright in three generations to have a steady job like that's like a thing and Sam is like he's supposed to be a tech genius but he basically wears like turtlenecks and pocket protectors and like bat like ugly jeans with sneakers like they're both just caricatures of themselves and I also think Jane and Krentz wrote this book not knowing anything about technology because specifically just all of the passages about Sam's work or about the program that he developed or anything like that is just really like embarrassing to read because like from my perspective it just sounds like somebody who knows nothing about technology trying to convince you that they know what technology is especially computers and it was just really not great and I'm just this was also the only one of these five that I listened to on audiobook. It was the first romance that I listened to on audiobook. I don't know how I felt about it. I think that in general I would listen to one on audio again, but on this particular one I was on like a long bus ride listening to it and it was just kind of weird because if it was good I don't think I would have minded, but the fact that it was bad meant I, I had to be in public like, oh my god, <laughs> like are you kidding me? So that was not my favorite. And they were just, it was just a very flat story. I also think that the mystery itself was pretty like boring. Usually this author throws in a little bit more murder at like the beginning. So there's like an initial conflict, but this one kind of like took a little bit more to get into. I also think that the eventual villain who they discover it, it, as it is, was kind of like thrown in at the last second to make sure that there was breadcrumbs. This is something that Amanda Quick or like Jane Ann Krentz does actually in a lot of her books is that she sets up kind of like a mystery and then like pretty close to the end she will like insert a scene that kind of seems out of place and then it just it's just because that person is the one who is the evil person and she needed like some sort of like track that she needed to throw them in towards the end so that you remember who they are and a lot of the times it feels like who it is is specifically in this one but there have been other ones and I've noticed this mostly in her contemporary novels is that the if person who ends up actually being the villain um, is like someone out of the blue if only for the sake of surprising the reader like it doesn't seem to actually be important to the plot anyway I'm passing on that one I think you should pass on that one too because it wasn't very good Wicked Widow, I gave a three and a half. I really like this one, but also I'm like, I love historical romances. They're my favorite. I think it's something about needing to um, still deal with these very strict social barriers and these social expectations and having to kind of get around them in the name of love. It's just something that I love. But Wicked Widow is about Madeline Daveridge, who is known as the Wicked Widow because society at large kind of believes that a year ago she killed her husband. This book takes place a year after the alleged murder and she believes that she's being haunted by her dead husband's ghost. So she hires Artemis Hunt, which is a terrible name. I hate it. I hate it. Artemis Hunt, who is to look into the mystery of her like husband's ghost for her. 
Artemis is a member of the Vanza Society, which her husband was as well, and so was her father. And basically what the society is, is like kind of a philosophical society. Um, it focuses a lot on like control of the mind and control of your emotions and studying specific Vanza philosophies, but it also involves like Vanza meditation and Vanza martial arts and Vanzagarian recipes. And it just, honestly, that got a little tired because it just loses meaning if something is Vanza on every single page. But yeah, he's a member of the Vanza society and that is like a central part of like the mystery and stuff like that. So I liked this book. It was not my favorite Amanda Quick. I think I've read it before, but just have no memory of it. So that's like kind of weird, but I, I mean, I'm gonna read more Amanda Quick novels. She's my favorite. And here's the thing, all of her books are the same. They are all exactly the same. Artemis Hunt is a slightly older, must kind of like large, but like he's like muscly, he's big, he's tall. Um, emotionally closed off man and he has a dark history, he's bad with relationships, and the woman, so in this one, Madeline, but in other ones, it's other women. They're headstrong and smart and intellectual, and I will say there's a bit more variety in the women because they have, like, different interests and, like, some of them, you know, there's a bit more variety in the female characters, but I, they all, they're all the same. They're all, like, headstrong and they're a lot of them are redheads you know but it's my favorite one thing that i used to think when i was like first getting into romance is that they're all very formulaic but this is my favorite formula you know what i mean so i really love these and i'm still gonna like it even even though i gave it three and a half stars like i still like it i still bought it for 50 cents and i feel like that's a steal the next book i'm going to talk about is coming to her rescue by katie knight i got this book from neck galley so Thanks to you, Neck Alley. Um, this book is about Jake Hendricks, a Navy SEAL who attends a bachelorette date auction because one of his friends makes him. And he ends up buying the date of Hannah Masterson, the younger sister of one of his good friends in the military. They spend a night together and, you know, it goes pretty well. So three weeks later, when she gets back from her business trip to Tokyo, she thinks she's pregnant and Jake has basically told her in no uncertain terms that nothing romantic can ever happen between them. Unfortunately, Jake is with her when Hannah is attacked by masked men with guns and cars, and they figure out that one of her clients, so she's a therapist, one of her clients may have told her sensitive information about this illegal organization that he was involved with, so she's now being hunted. So it's up to Jake to protect her, and that's where it goes from there. I gave this book three stars. It was not my favorite, and I think it was not the book's fault. I think it was me not really being a fan of the tropes that this book sp particularly played with. I think the book itself was perfectly fine. The writing was fine. There was some repetition in like the inner dialogues. They were kind of like repetitive. They both kind of harped on the same emotional issues that each character had, but. I think the book itself delivered like a military romance with an unplanned pregnancy trope like plot and that was really well done. I think I just don't like uh, pregnancy tropes like unplanned babies, surprise babies. They're just not my favorite thing. Um, so I think it just wasn't for me. I will say I did have a couple problems with the book. I will say that Hannah had not like other girls syndrome pretty bad. So Jake in his mind will be like, I've never met a girl who appreciated my car. And then like five pages later, Hannah will be like, so what kind of engine is it? My older brother worked at an auto shop and taught me everything he knew. Like it was kind of like that where she was just a little bit too like what he wanted. You know what I mean? It was really like kind of weird. And I also think that the end of the suspense like part of this book, so the end of the suspense plot was really anticlimactic. I thought it was... <laughs> In this book particularly, I want to say that the author like came up with this idea and was like, and then they can stay together because he has to protect her. And then was like, oh shit, I have to think of a reason for him to need to protect her. And also I'm not going to develop that at all. And also you're never going to really get the details about that because who cares? They're together. You know what I mean? Like 
that was not my favorite but I think this book was perfectly average it came out this month I believe earlier in July so if you want to check it out check it out if you like stuff like that I would recommend it because I don't think that it was a bad book by any means but it just wasn't for me Last but not least, I want to talk about The King's Spinster Bride by Ruby Dixon. I first heard about this book in a wrap-up from Mara at Books Like Woe, and she mentioned really liking it and it being a good modern barbarian romance, and I had commented like, can you tell me what a barbarian romance is? Because it kind of sounds interesting, but I'm not really good at identifying subgenres. So she commented back and explained it to me, and I it just sounded really interesting. So I googled the book and I found it for free so if you're interested you can also google the book and find it for free but this book is it takes place in a fantasy world that kind of is like the equivalent of medieval Europe and it's about Hala the princess of Yashrem and her country is basically conquered in the very beginning by the Cyclops and the Cyclops are a nomadic barbarian group of people who were they're not actually cyclops but they worship a one-eyed god who lost one eye in battle and so when they become warriors they cut out an eye to show that they don't need it in battle or something like that and when she is a teenager the prince so the son of the cyclops king uh has been taken captive his name's matthew he's like seven or eight and when the country is conquered the guard comes in and tries to kill Matthew and Hala protects him and the book takes place 16 years after that so there's that's like the prologue and then 16 years later Matthew is now king of the Cyclops and thus king of Yashrim and decides that he wants to marry Hala he's waited his whole life he's dreamed of her he remembered her bravery protecting him and how graceful and she was as queen for like the two hours that she was queen but um He's decided that now that he is king, he wants to marry her, and he goes find goes to find her in the convent, basically, where she's been living for the last 16 years. And this book is about the wedding ritual that they kind of go through, and I really liked this one. It was the shortest of all of them. I think it was like 125 pages, but I loved it. I thought it was well-written and interesting. I thought there was good world building for how short it was. I thought that the characters were well fleshed out for how short it was. And I also think that this is by far like the sexiest out of all five of the books that I'm mentioning in that all the sex scenes were like interesting and like not interesting and that they were weird, but they were well done and they were not repetitively written. You know what I mean? It was, they were good. This was also a really cool inversion of like the protective alpha trope because it was the big strong protective male who was the more emotionally vulnerable one trying to you know convince the woman that he loved her and would keep her safe and all of that and I just really liked it I thought it was really cute and I'm definitely gonna look up more of Ruby Dixon's work and I'm probably gonna read more barbarian romances because according to Mara at books like whoa the more modern ones are mostly kind of this inverted protective alpha trope where the the protective alpha man is the more emotionally vulnerable um whereas the older ones are a little bit more questionable in their kind of like consent and assault situations as can be it's not great but can be expected of romances written basically prior to 1990 so just to wrap this up i read five romances so far in july the first was Ransom by Julie Garwood. I'm not gonna rate this, but I really liked it. The second was Trust Me by Jane Ann Krentz. I gave this one two stars, and honestly, this one's a pass unless you are also like specifically a fan of Jane Ann Krentz. So uh, I wouldn't give this one any time. Next, I read Wicked Widow by Amanda Quick. I thought this one was suitably spooky for the setup. I thought the Vanza Society part of it was really stupid but I liked the dynamic between the characters. It's my particular favorite brand of historical suspense, and I liked it. I gave it three and a half stars. Coming to Her Rescue by Katie Knight, I gave three stars. It delivered exactly what it was going to with a military romance with a Navy SEAL and the kind of surprise baby trope as a uh, center of the plot, but it just wasn't particularly for me, and I think I'm probably going to avoid like baby tropes from now on they're just like not my favorite and last is the king's spinster bride i gave this one four stars i forget if i mentioned that before but 
this one was fun, sexy, interesting. I really liked the dynamic between the characters and I just really enjoyed it. I also think it's one of the most recent ones I've read, even though I finished Wicked Widow like this morning, but The King Spencer Bride was good and I'm gonna read more from that author. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you've read any of these or if you've heard of any of these, let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you guys next time. Bye!